Hello and welcome back. Uh, this video today is going to be art renditions of Jesus. Is it okay? Um, the study is going to be a little bit longer than normal. Um, we're going to be jumping around a lot of verses. But uh, just remember John 17:17, 17, 17, Sanctify them through thy truth, thy word is truth. Psalms 119.11 Thy word have I hid in mine heart that I might not sin against thee. Psalms 119.9 Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed thereto according to thy word. This study is to encourage sanctification. I am a King James Bible believer. I believe that it's the book above all these Bible perversions. This is the true word of God in English. It's perfect and without error. And we'll be using the King James Bible today. So, uh, turn to 1 Corinthians 8, 6. This is where we're going to start. But to us there is but one God, and the, the Father, and of whom are all things, and we in Him, and one Lord, Jesus Christ, by whom are all things, and we by Him. I had to start with this verse. Um, I, my glasses are sliding a little bit. I start with this verse because we got you got to understand that capital G God in the Bible is a reference to the Father. Uh, capital L Lord, Lord is a reference to Jesus Christ. You can't say that God the Father is a Lord also because then it makes the Bible an error. And this King James Bible is perfect if you're a King James Bible believer. My videos are always addressed to save sinners. Okay, if you're lost. I have a gospel message on this channel. Okay. You can go watch it. In fact, I encourage you to watch it. But Lord is Jesus Christ. God is the Father. Okay. There's only one capital G, God, the Father. If you believe Jesus Christ is God, you have to believe He's the Father. Now this study is not a big time proven that the Godhead is the correct versus the Trinity that's pagan. Um, this is more focused on what is the image of the Godhead, and I'm getting ahead of myself. So, let us turn to Acts 17, 28. Acts 17, 28. Help me keep my place. Okay. Acts 17, 28. We're going to go from 28 to verse 30. For in him we live and move and have our being, as certain also of your own poets have said, for we are also his offspring. For as much then as we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the Godhead is like unto gold or silver or stone, graven by art and men's devices, man's devices device. And the time of this ignorance God winked at, but now commendeth all men everywhere to repent. Okay. Now, man's devices. Okay, Today we have all kinds of technology um, and uh, engraven. I looked up the word engraven. Cut or marked as with a chisel or graver and printed deeply impressed. Um, there's all kinds of technology today. Uh, we got pens <laughs> now instead of having to use feathers. Um, we've got machines. One of the uh, channels I'm subscribed to is a man that does all kinds of woodworking. And one of the things he, gosh, probably a few months back, if not six months back, he got uh, this um, machine. And I don't know what to call it, but bottom line, he puts a piece of board underneath. It's got a chisel, and he types in the what he wants the board to look like. He can engrave an eagle on it. He can, uh, you know, he can do all kinds of stuff to it. Um, man's devices, okay, painting, <coughs> printing, I have a printer that can print out stuff, okay. Now the wink here that I believe is in the Old Testament, we'll see some verses, I believe that the Godhead is shown, not revealed, 
But now that it's revealed to us, we can go back in the Old Testament and say, hey, there's the Godhead right there. Oh, this verse, there's the Godhead right there. Okay? It's being revealed to us today when Paul was here in the church, what we call the church age, okay? Uh, wink means a hint given by shutting the eye with a significant cast. So you shut it for a second, shut it for a second. Um, you ever watch things um, where they cut certain things out and you see a glimpse, you see a glimpse, you see a glimpse. Um, you don't get the whole picture. Okay? God has given us hints as to what the Godhead is in the past, but now that the Godhead is revealed to us outright what it is, not how it works, but what it is, He's declared to us not to make images of the Godhead. In the Old Testament, you were not to have graven images before God. Okay? Now that the God has declared to us, Jesus is God, the Holy Spirit is God, they are all, and I'm jumping ahead again, these three are one, uh, he's saying you're not to make image of the Godhead. Okay. Uh, let's go to 1 John 5, 7. First John chapter 5, verse 7. This is a big one. Okay. For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. This is important for me to get everything in context before we got, start getting into what is the image of the Godhead. Okay? The true image of the Godhead. Um, these three are one. I have brothers out there doing videos where they're still slipping up and saying three and one, three and one. That's not what the Bible teaches. The Bible teaches that these three are one. Okay? we got to get that down. There's only one God, capital G God, the Father. Jesus Christ is God the Father. Okay? So Colossians 2.9 Okay, we're getting in context of getting ready to start the study. The Colossians 2.9. Okay. Uh, 2.9. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And in verse 8 it says, Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and feign deceit after the traditions of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. For in Him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Okay. you got to understand this. Body. Jesus is the body. And we're going to get to that. All right. This is important to understand. But let's look at the word full. Because some people don't understand it. And I'm not talking about full, F-O-O-L. I'm talking about full, F-U-L-L. -L. Because in that verse, Colossians 2, 9, it says fullness. Complete, entire, not defective or partial, as the full accomplishment of a prophecy. Another definition, complete, entire, once again, without abatement. In other words, Jesus is fully God, not a third of God, okay? Abatement, deduction, some withdraw as from an account. I went ahead and looked that up when it came to one of the definitions. But bottom line, yes, the God the Father is in Jesus, the Holy Spirit is in Jesus, but they are still, these three are one. In Jesus is the fullness of the Godhead. He is completely and fully God and the Holy Spirit in Him, God. One God, the Father. He is completely the Godhead. Okay, that in itself should tell you where we're going with this study. Okay. okay, I did this to show that it's not two cups in one, three separate parts. It's all connected. Okay, he is fully and completely God. Body, soul, spirit. We're going to get to that. Jeremiah 10.10. 10. We're going to go through a couple verses in the Old Testament to give examples of what I mean by the Godhead is there. 
but they don't know it back then because it's not revealed to them back then. But it's revealed to us today so we can go back to the Old Testament and see the Godhead there. So, Jeremiah 10.10. 10. So all the way to the back. Still don't have the old, the old Testament books memorized. As far as their placement. Jeremiah 10, 10. <coughs> okay. But the Lord is the true God. He is the living God and an everlasting king. As his wrath, the earth shall tremble and the nations shall not be able to abide his indignation. Okay. The point I did this is not to get in death, but look there. But the Lord, remember we read there's only one Lord. Jesus Christ, is the true God, capital G God, the Father. He is the living God. What do we have in us that makes us, that allows us to live? A spirit. What does God have? The Holy Spirit. That's why we serve, He is a living God, we serve a living God. Okay, a risen Savior too. So let's jump back to Hebrews 10.30. It's talking to the Jewish people. So that's Old Testament. And Hebrews is written to Hebrews in the time of Jacob's trouble. But chapter 10, verse 30. Chapter 10, verse 30. And 31. For we know him that hath said, Vengeance belongeth unto me, I will recompense, saith the Lord. And again, the Lord shall judge his people. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of a living God. Living God, Holy Spirit, capital G God, the Father, Lord, capital L, Lord, Jesus Christ. Now, like I said, you can go through the Old Testament and you'll see things, which is pretty amazing, of... The Godhead, but through it all, there's only one. There's only one body, soul, and spirit. There's only one of those that someone can see with their eyes, okay. minus the Holy Spirit. Because a lot of people are going to go back to when the Holy Spirit came down like as a dove on Jesus. Only time, nowhere else. The Holy the Holy Spirit's mentioned in the Old Testament a lot. It's mentioned in the New Testament. Okay, when I got saved, some manifestation, physical manifestation, didn't come down. That was just for the Jewish people as a sign because they require a sign. But God the Father, as we're going to read, doesn't have an image. Yet, He does have an image. I know it's kind of confusing, but I'm going to clear it up here. Okay. Okay, Lord God, living. Okay, you have Lord, which is Jesus, God, which is the Father, and living, which is the Holy Spirit. Okay. Now, we're going to get into the meat of this study. Now, what is the true image of the Godhead? If we were allowed to make an image, even though it said we're not, we read that, it's not, we're not to liken the image of the Godhead to an image. Okay. But if you were allowed to make an image of the Godhead... What would that image be? What would it look like? Okay. Wow. Printer's acting up on me. Okay. Somehow I have two blank pages. Now, 2 Corinthians 4, 1. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 1. Corinthians chapter 4, verse 1. We are going to keep going through, but I'm going to be stopping here and there. So we're going to do verse 1 and 2. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry as we have received mercy, we faint not. 
but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully. But by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. Now, I did these two verses because I want you to know that, brothers and sisters in Christ out there, I want you to be honest. Okay? We're going to go through the scriptures, and if you go through them with me, you're going to see what I'm going to see. Okay? There's no, oh, I don't know what you're talking about, you're just way out there. Okay. I just wanted to throw that in there, to be honest, to follow the scriptures, do the study even more in depth if you want, for yourselves. Okay. So, verse 3 where we left off. 3 through 5. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God, lowercase g, God, Satan, of, the, of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Okay? Capital G, God is the Father. Jesus Christ is the image of the Father. Now, as we go through this study, we're, you're going to realize with me that the true image of the Godhead is Jesus Christ. He is the true image of the Godhead, and we're commanded not to make images of the Godhead. Okay? Because someone told me, well, just doing one of Jesus by himself is not really making an image of the Godhead. And I'm always saying, err on the side of caution, but God put it on my heart to actually do a study and say, you know what? What is the image of the Godhead? We're commanded not to do it, but what is it? Now, one thing I've always pushed is Jesus Christ. Do you know exactly what Jesus Christ used to look like back when he walked on this earth at in a corruptible body? Meaning that he needed to sleep, he needed to eat, he was tempted, he was perfect, he never fell into temptation, but he was still in a corruptible body. Do you know exactly what Jesus looked like? If you're honest, you're going to say no. Then why are you putting up with people drawing pictures of them? Those pictures are to deceive you. Uh, John. So right there we see that Jesus Christ, the gospel of Christ, the glorious gospel of Christ, Jesus Christ, who is the image of God. John 1.18. Let's go back to John 1.18. Okay. No man hath seen God at any time, the only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, he hath declared him. Now remember that point, that he hath declared him. No man hath seen God at any time, the only begotten Son. Okay. The only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, he hath declared him. 1 John 4.12. Let's go over to 1 John. We're going to be jumping over a little bit. 1 John 4.12. Jumping over a lot. Four, verse 12. Okay. Right here. No man hath seen God at any time. Capital G, God, the Father. Both passage John 1.18, we read the same thing. Capital G, God, the Father. 12. No man hath seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwelleth in us, and his love is perfected in us. Now, Jesus is God the Father, the image of God the Father. That's what the whole point of this is. Jesus is the image of the Godhead. Okay? The fullness of the Godhead bodily. We can see the body. You can't see the soul and you can't see the spirit. You can't see my soul and you can't see my spirit. You can only see the body. Yet, all three of them are part of me. They're one. Now, God takes the spirit away. I die. Uh, my body goes into the ground becomes dust again. My soul will go to either two places. I know it's going to heaven, but one person's soul can go to two places. Heaven or hell. I'm going to heaven because God saved me. 
I don't deserve it, but God saved me. All right. True salvation is always God saving you. Uh, God the Father is declared through Jesus Christ. Okay. We see God, we'll find out later, um, that you can see God by seeing Jesus Christ. You can know God by knowing Jesus Christ. Jesus declares the Father to us because He is the Father. He's the image of God the Father. Okay, the other point I wanted to point out here is also it says, God dwelleth in us. This is another verse, brothers and sisters in Christ, to prove that the Holy Spirit and God are one and the same. I have the Holy Spirit in me, yet this says, God, capital G, God, the Father, dwelleth in me. Okay. We have the Holy Spirit in us. Now, we jump back all the way back over to John. John chapter 14. Okay. It's important to get this stuff, to understand that Jesus is the image of the Godhead. Okay. John 14. Verse 6. We're going to start in 6, and we're going to go all the way to 11. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. And if you've done the study on it, way, Jesus Christ, truth, uh, the Holy Spirit, I hope I'm not getting this messed up, and life, uh, God when we read Genesis 1, we'll get there where he breathed into Adam the nostrils and Adam became a living soul. And we'll get to that. So right there, Jesus is saying, I'm the Godhead. Okay? He is the expressed image of the Godhead, but he's saying, I'm the Godhead. Let's keep going. If ye had known me, ye should have known my Father also. Remember, we talked about that. And have henceforth ye know him and and from henceforth ye know him and have seen him. Not only have we known God the Father, and see, well, we've seen God the Father through Jesus Christ. So Jesus Christ is the image of God the Father. Philip saith unto him, Lord, show us the Father, and it sufficeth us. Jesus saith unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that hath seen me hath seen the Father. And how sayest thou then, Show us the Father? Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the work. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very work's sake. When you say the Father, when he says, I'm in the Father and the Father's in me, he's saying they're one. Okay? If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Why? Because Jesus Christ is the expressed image of God the Father. Jesus Christ is the image of the Godhead. Okay? That's what I'm trying to impress here, because a lot of people say, well, images of Godhead, we shouldn't have them, the Bible condemns it, yet it's okay to have images of Jesus Christ. We're not to have images of God the Father because, you know, He's the invisible God, and we're not to have, have images of the, Holy, uh, the Go, uh, Holy Spirit, like as a dove, and stuff like that, because it's satanic, and yet a lot of uh, Bible-believing Christians, and I was one of them, um, didn't really have a problem with images of Jesus Christ, images of Jesus Christ. And we'll find out one of the questions you've got to ask yourself is, what is one of the biggest deceptions that are going on um, the image of Jesus Christ that's being depicted today? Okay? Has it done more harm or more good? And if you're honest with yourself, you'll say that it's done more harm because a lot of the images of Jesus Christ is of the Antichrist. Which is why I believe that God didn't want us making images of Jesus Christ, the Godhead. Okay. So there we see that Jesus is claiming to be the image of God the Father. 
not a twin, but the image of God the Father. Let's go down to Colossians, not down to, but let's go to Colossians. Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1, verse 12. And we're going to go all the way down to 19. All right, just making sure. Verse 12. Giving thanks unto the Father which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light, who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sin. Who, this is the important part, verse 14, because like I said, I'm not trying to, but every once in a while I just got to. Um, right there, verse 14, through his blood, talking about Jesus Christ, but there's another passage that says, feed the church of God, which he had purchased with his own blood, and the he part is referring to God the Father. They're one and the same. But here's 15, here's the key part. Who, this is talking about Jesus Christ, is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. Okay? The soul, that's why I said earlier, it's confusing, but now we're getting it to come to light. It's coming into more focus. God the Father is the soul, doesn't have an image. But he does, because that image, the body, is Jesus Christ. They're one and the same. That's why it says the invisible God can be seen by looking at Jesus Christ. The firstborn of every creature. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, where they, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. Okay. For it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. The reason I read down all the way to 19, I had to prove that it's talking about Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the image of the invisible God. But let verse 19 sink in a little bit. For it pleased the Father that in Him should all fullness dwell. Who's the fullness of the Godhead bodily? Jesus Christ. This is talking about Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the physical image of the Godhead. Okay? Fullness in Him dwell. Okay? It goes back to the Godhead again. Let us go to Romans one uh, sixteen. Romans one sixteen. Just making sure, because we're going to be going through this uh, a, a little bit of this chapter. So Romans one sixteen. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first, and also to the Greek. And the reason I emphasize this is when we get down to where it starts talking about us being the evidence of God's power and the Godhead, okay, we're evidence. I'm not the power, God's the power. We pray to God saying, um, I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. We pray to God for strength to help us get through things. But the power it's talking about here is the power of the gospel of Christ. Jesus being God the Father, dying on the cross, it was God's blood that was shed, and it's the only way that you can go to heaven, is by repenting, believing, confessing both in prayer. The repenting and believing part happens in the heart, which is leading to salvation. You confess both to God in prayer, and like I said, I have a gospel message on this channel, you confess both to God in prayer, and then you ask God to save you, showing that you don't deserve it, showing that you can't take it, 
showing that you can't save yourself. You're asking God to save you. The power of God unto salvation. Jesus Christ being God the Father. That's the power being talked about there. God saving you through His Son. It's the only way you can be saved and go to heaven. It's through Jesus Christ. Verse 17 for therein is the righteousness of God revealed, revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. Notice uh, the revealed part, from faith to faith. Old Testament to the New Testament. The righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. Um, I might have jumped it to a little bit where it's kind of out there to think it that way. But it's also talking about my faith gets seen and you preach the gospel to somebody. They get saved. Their faith gets seen from faith to faith. Okay, And the just shall live by faith. Verse 18. Making sure I didn't miss any notes. No, that's supposed to be 16, 7. So 18, the next part. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God hath showed it unto them. Remember the verse that it says manifest in them. Remember the verse we read about how God dwelleth in you? The Holy Spirit, God is manifest in them. Let's see. Verse 19, because that which may be known of God is manifest in them. I might be copying, but we'll just keep going. For God has showed it unto them. 20, for the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power. Eternal power. Remember I talked about in verse 16. Eternal power and Godhead. Okay. Clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made. Now I understand it's internal power can also be a reference to everything he's created. I understand that. But follow me with this part real quick when it comes to us being the example, the evidence of God's power and Godhead. Eternal power and Godhead so that they are without excuse. Okay? Because that when they knew God, they glorified Him not as God. Capital G, God's talking about the Father. When they knew the Father, because Jesus said, If you've known me, you've known the Father. Okay? They glorified Him not as God. So when they knew Jesus, they knew the Father, but they didn't glorify Him as the Father. Neither were thankful, but became vain in their imagination, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. Okay. This falls under the people who try to use the Trinity, replace the Godhead with the Trinity. They say, well, they're one and the same. No, they're replacing the Godhead with the Trinity. They're not one and the same. But they profess themselves to be wise, they became fools, because they try to explain how the Godhead works by changing into the Trinity, and trying to explain it in more depth on how it works, and... They've fallen into the trap of worshiping a false god. The, tr the Trinity is pagan. The Godhead is truth. And change the glory of the uncorruptible God. Remember what we talked about earlier. Uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man. Because we're going back over these verses again. Corruptible man and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. That's important to remember. The glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man. We keep trying to draw Jesus um, as he was on this earth, corruptible. But he's incorruptible. We'll get to that. Um, we go to 21... Kind of went farther than we're supposed to, it looks like, but, um, but we got there. 
Uh, now remember that there is one God the Father. We proved that with the verses. Verse 21 is talking about Jesus being God the Father. Um, why are professing Christians Trinitarians? That's good. I skipped, I was supposed to stop at 21. 21 it says that they neither glorified Him as, not as God, neither were thankful. So a question you got to ask yourself, brothers and sisters in Christ, why do people who stand for the Trinity, okay, they are not glorifying Jesus as God, and there's only one capital G, God, the Father. He's His own God. He's not the Father. He's His own God. They're not glorifying Jesus as God. They're also not thankful that Jesus is God, capital G, God. Only one God, capital G, God, the Father. They're not thankful the Father, of Jesus being the Father. They're not. They're not thankful of Jesus being capital G, God, fully and completely God. That's who this verse, I believe, is talking about. Right? Anybody who doesn't believe in the Godhead, the true biblical Godhead, these three are one. Jesus is the Father. The Father is the Holy Spirit. Ghost and the Holy Ghost is Jesus. Jesus says, I will come to you. And then he talks about God the Father sending the Holy Spirit to be with you. But, he, but Jesus said, I'm going to be with you. They're all one and the same. These three are one. Body, soul, spirit. But they're one. Okay. Why aren't these Trinitarians glorifying Jesus as God? Why aren't they thankful? that Jesus is God, because only God's blood can wash your sins away. Why aren't they thankful? Why do they attack the Godhead and, true, and us true Bible-believing, God-fearing men and women who believe in the written Word of God? It's a good question to ask yourself. Uh, they're just not thankful. They are not glorifying Jesus. Okay. But Romans uh, 122, we read, professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. Why? Because they try to explain the Trinity. And right there, they don't want to glorify Jesus as God, and they're not thankful that Jesus is God. Capital G, God, the Father. Verse 23, I'm going to read 2 to 25. Verse 23, and change the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like unto corruptible man. We read this one and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Remember that point. Jesus is uncorruptible. Jesus is God, capital G God, and he's incorruptible. Yet we keep drawing him as a corruptible man. And to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie and worship and serve the creature more than the Creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. Notice there, creature is lowercase the first time it's mentioned, and capital the second time it's mentioned. Um, I don't want to get ahead of myself, but creature there can be a reference to man. Uh, you're a new creature in Christ Jesus. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Creature can be a reference to man. Lowercase c, creature there, is talking about anything that's worshipped other than Jesus. But for what we're talking about here, man. People are saying, those images of Jesus, that's Jesus. But I don't worship the It doesn't matter. If you said it was Jesus, then that's what you're worshipping. That's who you worship. Period. You can't get around that. Okay? Well, this picture is of Jesus. That's who you worship. Okay? You're worshiping the creature, lowercase c, more than the... I'm sorry, I had it backwards. Creature is c, please forgive me. And creator is capital C. Uh, I said creature twice, I think. Creator is capital C, talking about Jesus Christ. They're worshiping a corruptible man an image of a corruptible man, they're not serving Jesus Christ. Okay. Now, 2 Corinthians 5.17, I uh, got thrown in here real quick. 
I, I want you to stay here, but I'm going to read it real quick. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, that's what I was reading. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Man falls under the word creature. So, remember, the creature more than the creator. Creature is lowercase c. Creator is capital C. Okay. Two points that I'd like to go over in this context of here talking about what we're talking about. First of all, one, we've said it, Jesus does not have a corrupt, corruptible body anymore. Why is Jesus always being portrayed in his corruptible body? Turn to Revelation 1, 11. A lot of you have um, done the studies. You know that where I'm going is the true image of Jesus Christ. Revelation 1, 11. Verse 11. And we're going to go all the way down to 19. Verse 11, saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last, and what, what thou seest, write in a book, and send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia, unto Ephesus, and unto Smyrna, and unto Pergamos, and unto Thyatira, if I can say it right, unto Sardis, and unto Philadelphia, and unto Laodicea. Now right there real quick, I'm going to make a side note. I believe this right here proves and is saying that John came back. He didn't stay up in heaven. He came back because he was commanded to write a book. He was sitting there. He was caught up. Just him. And he's only seeing right now. But Jesus is commanding him to write it in a book and send those books to the seven churches. Okay. Verse 12, And I turned to see the voice that spake unto me, and being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks, and in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man. Why did John say like? Could it be that there's something different about Jesus now, because he's not in his corruptible body anymore, he's in his incorruptible body? Let's see. Clothed with a garment down to the foot. Now I'm not saying John didn't know it was Jesus. He said he's like unto the Son of Man. There's something different about him. This is Jesus, but there's something different about him. Okay. Clothed with a garment down to the foot and girded about the paths with a golden girdle. His head and his hair were white like wool. They weren't the texture of wool, it was white like wool, as white as snow. And his eyes were as a flame of fire, and his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. And he had in his right hand seven stars, and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword, and his countenance was as the sun shineth in his strength. Now, Jesus is in his incorruptible body. He's ascended. Okay. If you remember where he's telling, I think it was Mary, uh, Mary Magdalene, where he's saying, don't touch me, I have not yet ascended to my Father. He has gotten his incorruptible body. Read that description again. Okay. Verse 17, And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. And he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not, I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and death. Write the things which thou hast seen, and the things which are, and the things which shall be hereafter. Okay. This is the true image of Jesus Christ right now. When he comes back, we're going to see him in his incorruptible body. How come Jesus is never depicted this way? Now, I know the whole point at the start of the study is what if we were allowed to. We know we're not allowed to. But this is who Jesus is right now, what he looks like. How come it's never depicted that way? So one of the points I wanted to make from when we read uh, Romans 1.22 
is corruptible man, Jesus is not in his corruptible body. So why are we doing that? Because the Bible condemns it, and it's preparing the way for the Antichrist. All these images of Jesus Christ is preparing a way for the Antichrist. There's so many different variations and different looks, different styles. So Satan has his pick and choose. Which one do I want to choose? And if he looks different than the pictures slightly, then he can say, well, there's so many pictures. We don't actually know Jesus. It could be Jesus. It could be when it's actually the Antichrist. Okay? Images of Jesus Christ is very dangerous to have. Okay, I talked about verse 13 in Revelation about like unto the Son of Man. Okay, John knew there was a difference. He knew it was Jesus, but there was a difference. And it was pretty obvious. Okay. Uh, point number two. We, when we read that, we are the evidence of God's eternal power and Godhead. Okay. Run, Romans 1.16, we read it before. Gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth. Okay. We are the example of God's power, let's see, God's eternal power, because A, He created us, and we're going to get to that here real quick. He created us, but He saved me. To the lost world, not only my, me being created by God is an example and proof of God's evidence of God, but God saving me is evidence of God. I am saved. I am bought with a price. There's a changed life. People see a change in me. There's something different about Him. It's not the same person anymore. God saved you? How, how, how is that possible? You mean there's a God? And, God, and, and he came to earth as, in a corruptible body and he died on a cross for you and saved you? Yes, he did. We, brothers and sisters in Christ, are evidence of God's eternal power. Not just our creation, but God saving us and us witnessing to the lost world. God exists. He saved me. Okay. So the internal power here, I believe, one of the things you can take from it is it's talking about salvation. Only God can save us. Only God has the power to save us and give us eternal life. And we are evidence of that as we witness with our life and how we live our life. We testify with our life and with our mouth. Remember the series I'm going through, Walk or Talk. As a Christian, you're to have the walk and the talk. We are evidence of God's eternal power unto salvation. God's power unto salvation. I don't want it to be added to that verse. All right. It's one thing I want you to get real quick. Right. And we are made in the image of God. Jesus, we're going to find out. I did a teaching. I'm jumping ahead. I like jumping ahead. I did a teaching on triplets. Trinity triplets. Talking about how Jesus is the expressed image of God and we are made in Jesus' image. And we're made in the likeness of God having a body, soul, and spirit. But man is made in the image of Jesus Christ. In other words, Jesus Christ is the image of the Godhead. Mm -hmm. We are examples, because the next part is we are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made. Mankind, okay, men and women made in the likeness of God. We are evidence that God exists. He created us. There's also everything around us, but for what we're talking about, sp specifically focusing on men and women. Okay. So let's go back to when God created us. Genesis chapter 1. I'm not going to go hardcore. I did, like I said, I did a did a study on this for Trinity Triplets. But we're going to go to Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. Chapter 1, verse 26. And God said, let us, that's plural, make man in our, that's plural, image 
after our likeness. Okay. Image. Man is made, I'm talking about men, are made in the image of God. But men are also made in the likeness of God, in our likeness. Women, God took a rib from Adam and created woman. Women are made in the likeness of God. But notice here it says in our, or us, let us make man in our image. And if you watch that study, I proved that the image it's talking about here is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the image of God the Father and the Holy Spirit. He's the image it's talking about. You can't see the soul. You can't see the spirit. Okay. So uh, verse 27. So God created man in his own image, and the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. Note it's a little bit separate. There's a uh, dot comma. Male and female created he them. I believe that's talking about the likeness of God. Uh, God is masculine. He's not feminine. He's not unisex. He's masculine. God is a man. Jesus Christ is God. Okay. Our image. There's only one image of the Godhead. Jesus Christ. What is the likeness of the Godhead? Well, if you go to Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. Go to Ge Genesis 2, verse 7. And the Lord God formed man out of the dust of the ground, body, and breathe into his nostrils the breath of life, Holy Spirit, and man became a living soul, body, soul, spirit. That's what the likeness of God is. And right here I was referring to it earlier when it talks about how God breathed in the nostrils of life, the other verse we're talking about where Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. The way. Jesus is the only way. The truth, the Holy Spirit brings you into all truth. The life, right here. God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. Notice it says, Lord God, Jesus, who is God. Like I said, he's mentioned throughout the whole Old Testament, but I don't want to get sidetracked. Those are the three parts that are likeness of God that are one. Body, soul, spirit. Okay. 1 Corinthians 11, 7. We're almost finished here. I'm trying to prove a point that we shouldn't have images of Jesus Christ in your home and we shouldn't be promoting him whatsoever. So 1 Corinthians 11, 7. For a man indeed ought not to cover his head, talk about men, actual men, for as much as he is the image of and glory of God, but the woman is the glory of the man. I just wanted to throw that in there again, showing that man was made in God's image, and women were taken from man. That's why men and women are in the likeness of God. But once again, Jesus Christ came down, the man Christ Jesus. So there's one mediator between man and God, the man Christ Jesus. Okay? The image of the Godhead is Jesus Christ. Men are made in his image. His, when it comes to the body, um, that's what that, I believe that's talking about there. Hebrews 1 3. Just hitting some little things here and there. Hebrews verse 1, chapter 3, or chapter 1. <laughs> Verse 3. Okay. Right here it says, Who being the brightness of his glory and the expressed image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. And you can go into more depth and read it, but you realize when you do the study, I've done it, brothers in Christ have done it, um, the expressed image of his person is talking about Jesus Christ. Person is a reference to Jesus Christ. Who, Jesus Christ, being the brightness of his glory, God the Father. Remember we talked about the fullness and him dwelt the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And the verse talking about Jesus being the fullness 
of God, of him, and the expressed image of his, the word his is talking about the Father, and person is shown possession, Jesus Christ. Now notice what it says there, the expressed image of his person. Jesus Christ is the image of God. A person has a body, soul, and spirit. We're already doing that study. We're going through. I'm taking my time. I'm doing small videos going through each book so we can take our time and go through it together. Um, and proving that person is always a reference to somebody who has a body, soul, and spirit. So, right here, express image of his person. Jesus Christ has a body, soul, and spirit. Soul, God the Father, Spirit, Holy Spirit, Jesus is the body. And, he's, and Jesus is the image. He's what we can see of the Godhead. He is the true image of the Godhead. If we were allowed to make an image of the Godhead, it would be Jesus Christ. Do we know what Jesus Christ truly, truly looks like? We've been given an example of what he looks like now, but, I, but like I said, nobody hardly ever makes a, bit, a picture of him like that. It's always as he was when he fir first came. Do we know what Jesus exactly what he looked like when he first came? No. You don't. You cannot do an artist's rendition and say, this is exactly what Jesus looks like. This is exactly Jesus. This is the man I worship. This is the man that saved me. Who is God the Father. You can't do that. So why would you have an image that could be a false god in your home? Okay. Now, the number one people that like to make the false images is the Catholic Church. But there's people out there, I've already talked to, um, I, David Daniels responded to some of the comments I made at Chick Publications where I'm saying we're not to make images of the Godhead. You're not supposed to have an image of God the Father, which he does, and you're not to have an image of Jesus Christ, the Son. So, but the thing is, is God the Father is an invisible God. And we can see God the Father through Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the image, singular, of the Godhead. Okay. My hope is that you get rid of any images of the Godhead, which is Jesus Christ, from your home. That is my hope. I'm trying to encourage you, brothers and sisters in Christ. We have Him in our heart. We have Jesus in us. We don't need false images created by man of Jesus in a corruptible body like under corruptible man. We don't need that in our home. Okay? Um, I did a talk once where I was talking about the uh, cross. We don't need a cross in your home. That cross is representative of a curse. You don't want curses in your home. Okay? I don't need a cross, crucifix, to remember what Jesus Christ did to me. Thy word have I hid in my heart. That I might not sin against thee, but thy, thy word have I hid in my heart. I have the whole, I have the perfect written word of God, the Holy Spirit in me, and the fact that God saved me. That's all I need. You don't need an image of Jesus Christ. Okay. I'm going to go back over Acts 17, 28. For in him we live and move and have our being, as certain also of your own poets have said, for we are also his offspring. For as much then as we are the offspring of God, examples, or evidence, I mean, and examples, um, we ought not to think that the Godhead is likened unto gold or silver or stone graven by art and man's devices, device. And the times of this ignorance God winked at, but now commandeth all men everywhere to repent. Okay? I repented, I still get books from the bookstore, and I go through them and come across a picture of Jesus if it's something I can rip out, if it's something I can black out, like totally destroy it where it's not there, um, I do it. But there's a lot of times I get through something, I'm like, oh man, it seems like a good book, but it's got page after page, like just five or six pictures through it, and on the back side of the pictures are all the words, and the pictures are huge, and it's like... I've been throwing stuff out. I've had to throw out a lot of chick publication work that they do because they show images of the Godhead. 
Um, they also keep saying God the Son, capital G, God the Son, and there's only one capital G, God, the Father. So I hope this has encouraged you to at least look into it more, to at least understand that why not err on the side of caution? I believe it's clear stating that the image of the Godhead is Jesus Christ. We're not to have images of the Godhead. We're not to have images of Jesus Christ. He is the image of the Godhead. Now, the Old Testament is something that hasn't changed. You're not to have any false images. I threw away owls. I threw away, and I'll be doing some other videos where you come across items in your home that look innocent, but you look into it and what it represents, and you realize why God's not really that fond of making 3D images of, you know, animals and stuff like that. Um, but I'll be doing a video, I'm jumping ahead. I just want to encourage you, brothers and sisters of Christ, to get rid of all these false images of Jesus Christ. And you know which ones are the false images of Jesus Christ? All of them. You can't sit there and say, well, mine's the real one. They're all false. You don't know what Jesus looked like. We've been given an example where it talks about where he's not pleasing to the eye, that any man should desire him. And I'm kind of messing that verse up a little bit. We have, we have a general idea of what he is, what he looks like. I mean, he's Jewish, and he's not, not that no man to desire him. But you don't know who he really looks like. Get rid of those pictures, okay? Get them out of your home. Sanctification, okay? Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. The word proves that Jesus is the expressed image of the Godhead. And the word proves that we're not to have images of the Godhead. So I hope this helped you. I hope this, you'll take it to heart. Get rid of the, the pictures. If you're still fighting it, uh, do some more studies on your own. And I hopefully it'll get to you. The Holy Spirit will convict you as it did, as it did me to... Get those pictures out of your home. I love my brothers and sisters in Christ. Uh, grace and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And my love for you in Christ Jesus. I'm praying for you. Please pray for me. Right now we're going through a drought a little bit. My well <laughs> kicked off and we started getting a little dark, like a little bit of dirt in with our water. So the well kicked off. Praise the Lord. I have a backup tank that we're living off right now. Um, the rain's supposed to be coming, you know, sometime in the next couple weeks. And um, every once in a while we'll get a little bit more water in, from the well into the tank. But um, my system's set up where I'm getting water straight from the well. And when the well gets empty, I have a backup tank. So praise the Lord for the backup tank. But we can really use your prayer very much. Um, I'll see you guys in the next video.